Welcome to the Creative Pen Podcast. I'm Joanna Penn, thriller author and creative entrepreneur, bringing you interviews, inspiration and information on writing, publishing options and marketing ideas for your book. You can find the episode show notes, your free author blueprint and lots more information at thecreativepen.com and that's pen with a double N. And here's the show. Hello creatives, I'm Joanna Penn and this is episode number 642 of the podcast and it is Tuesday the 16th of August 2022 as I record this. In today's in between episode, I'm talking to Ryan Dingler from Google about their auto narration service for audiobooks. Now, I gave an overview of AI narration in my solo episode 623 back in May, but that was across all the different platforms and options. So definitely go back and listen to that if you're interested in this topic as a wider a wider area. This episode is specifically about Google Playbooks auto narration, and we go into what is available in their currently free program, objections to AI narration, as well as future possibilities and opportunities for growth. At the end of the interview, I will include a chapter from Your Author Business Plan, narrated by Mia, one of the Google Play voices. It's just under five minutes, so you can see what you think. It's for sale on Google Play Books and also on my Shopify store at creativepenbooks.com, although there is also a version narrated by me priced a little higher. So I have human and AI narrated versions. I also have that for a thousand fiendish angels for fiction. This episode is sponsored by my course, the AI Assisted Author, which focuses on all the different areas where we as authors can take advantage of AI tools for writing and marketing our books. It includes the techno-optimist attitude, problems with AI, natural language generation and prompt engineering, which is becoming uh, a lot more visible uh, in these, the sort of era of AI images, which you might have seen as well. We also go into poetry, fiction, nonfiction, journalism, marketing copy, marketing ads, AI narration, AI for video, translation, ethics, and how to surf the changes ahead. So you can find the course at thecreativepen.com forward slash learn, and that is the AI assisted author. Right, let's get into the interview. Ryan Dingler is a product manager at Google and also writes about the intersection of technology and business. So welcome back to the show, Ryan. Of course. Thanks for having me on. Oh, no, it's good to talk to you again. Now, you were on the show in April 2021, talking about publishing on Google Play Books in general. And we just mentioned auto narration for audio, which was in beta at the time. But we're going to go into that in detail today. So start by telling us what is auto narration for audio books? Give us an update on where the program is now. Yeah, of course. So we've come a long way since I last spoke with you, both in terms of the beta and in terms of kind of what we've done with the product. But just to start off, what are auto-narrated audiobooks? It very simply, instead of being read by a person, auto-narrated audiobooks are read using Google's text to speech technology. And we have a whole tool set and framework around building these auto-narrated audiobooks. And this all came about a few years ago, actually, where we noticed just a massive gap between ebooks and audiobooks, with 95% of ebooks not having an accompanying audiobook, which in our books uh, catalog is millions and millions of books. And it's not that we looked into it, some of these ebooks would make sense as an audiobook. It's just that, as most everyone knows, audiobooks are very expensive to create and take a lot of time. So that's when we came up with the idea of auto narrated audiobooks. And we have trying to been progressing it forward since then. Mm, and so it, it was in beta. So who can get into it now? It's, I think, has it come out of beta completely? Yeah, so, so beta can be a, somewhat of a confusing word. It is still in beta. Uh, kind of Google is known for keeping our products in beta for a long time. We are just beginning kind of our process, but it is actually available kind of generally in eight countries today. Uh, those countries are the United States, the UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Mexico, Spain, and Argentina. So if you are a publisher in one of those countries and you have a account with us in our partner center, you can go in and try it out. Uh, it's in two languages, English and Spanish, as you might be able to guess by the countries. 
Uh, and all you really need is three things. You need an ebook that's in English or Spanish. It needs to be an EPUB format, and the book does need to be live on Google Play. And we have, as I said before, a whole editor around this process to to help walk you through it and make sure that the auto-narrated narrator is actually pronouncing things the way that you want, and that your ebook that is now going to become an audiobook has all the things that an audiobook would have and doesn't have, which of course is like the table of contents, uh, copyright, and things like that. Mm. Well, quite a few questions coming from that then. And I should say to everyone, I've got to set an in introduction as well, but I do have, I have tried this. I have a, a couple of auto narrated books. And so you've got English and Spanish, but so just using English, because that's what I was doing. So you do, you have different accents as well, don't you? Because of course, you and I both speak English, but we both have, well, di different genders, but also different accents. So what are the range of accents available in those languages? Yeah, so we have, I think, about six different accents for English language today. Uh, it, uh, at the top of my head, I think we have American, we have British, we have Indian, Australian, and a few other ones. We have really tried to provide publishers kind of a full range of accents. Obviously, we have nowhere near covered uh, the, the wide variety that there is. Obviously, there's even accents inside of the UK, inside of the American that would be further, but our whole goal is to continue adding these accents so that uh, publishers can choose the right narrator for their book, whether they're trying to represent the author or represent a unique character that would be, they would be speaking it. So we have seven or so today by language, and we also have those accents in Spanish as well, uh, but we're continuing to add more. And one word on languages. So we are in English and Spanish only today, but we are looking to add German and French, and that we're expecting to have those made available by later this year and in Portuguese as well might be following just after that. Uh, no, that's brilliant. I love, I actually have, because uh, I narrate my own as me, <laughs> but I had a American woman, African-American woman that the voice sounded like, and it's lovely. I love it. And also what I like is that you can actually speed it up slightly so you can do like, um, I think like a 1.1, if you want to, the speed to be a bit different, I'm right on, on that, aren't I? You can change the kind of speed and that kind of thing. Yes, exactly. So you can change the default narrator speed. I think we have it so it can go from uh, roughly 0.5, which is very slow, to 1.5 from the default narrator speed. Uh, each narrator kind of speaks at their own cadence. We try to give a sense of this by telling them the speed, which is really just the amount of words per minute that they would speak uh, normally. I mean, everyone speaks at different paces. So uh, if you like a narrator, but they speak a little bit too slowly, you can speed them up or slow them down uh, either mm, way. As you like. Yeah. And I do like the editor. I think the editor process is brilliant. I think it's much better than a lot of other things that I've seen in the sort of AI space. It's very user friendly. And you you mentioned that you can change the pronunciation of things. So explain how that happens. Yeah, certainly. So this came about as we were looking at our own public domain audiobooks. So public domain books are books that anyone in general society can use and uh, create. So we started creating some of our own books. Think of books like Frankenstein that have been on the market for 50 to 70, I think is the, the cutoff for public domain, 70 plus years or more. And what we found is that just some words, especially words that were from older English, because these books are quite old, were just pronounced in a way that we would have otherwise wanted different. Um, so we have kind of two ways that we to do it. One is if if it's just pronounced wrong, we try to fix that in our system. There's also just personal preference by the publisher or the author it says, you know, I created this name. I want it spoken this specific way. So if, if that is the case, uh, you can go into the editor. You can uh, click on a word and click a right click, hit edit pronunciation. And this whole panel on the right hand side opens up to either change the spelling of a pronunciation or try to tweak the, the way that it's pronounced. And we can do that through a few ways. Uh, one of it's like a homograph. It can be pronounced in a few different ways. For instance, I always think of tomato, tomato, or if you're British, the way that you pronounce water <laughs> is very different from an American would pronounce water. Uh, so we would have those alternative pronunciations, especially if you do it with a British narrator versus an American narrator. Uh, but we've also found that you know, sometimes it's just really hard to phonetically type a uh, pronunciation. So we do have a feature that allows you to speak the pronunciation into your mic if you just only speak 
that specific word. Uh, we try to convert that into our own kind of pronunciation language uh, and capture the meaning or the way that you are trying to pronounce the word. I always like to think of uh, when Harry Potter came out, everyone was pronouncing uh, Hermione as Hermione. And, or Hermione. Uh, or Hermione, <laughs> a ton of different variations. <laughs> Uh, and if she wanted J.K. Rowling could just go in there and say, oh, no, it's Hermione, and then it would be fixed throughout the entire audiobook. And this is kind of magic for those of us. Like, I've been narrating audiobooks now for a few years and also working with narrators, and there's this horrible moment if you're working with a human narrator and you realise you haven't told them how you wanted a name to be pronounced. So I have an example. Uh, I had a character called Guest, G-E-S-T, and, it, and they pronounced it Jest, like, as if it had a J at the beginning. And I just assumed, I just couldn't see how that would have been, like a hard G rather than a soft G. But with the AI, you can just type it once, right? And then it changes the whole whole audiobook <laughs> rather than having exactly. to re-record anything which is look, it's frankly amazing and we were saying just before we started we were trying to get the room tone right and again as a narrator I'm like I have to edit out all these clicks and pops and uh, noises of my jaw sometimes if I'm dehydrated I have to edit those out or lip smacks or tummy gurgles and all these things and they just don't happen so th there are a lot of speed as you say and that's humans are humans they make human noises but it, it is interesting how I just love that universal change I think that that is a, a killer app basically. Yeah and one thing that I always like to point out too is if you have a mistake in a traditional audiobook and you realize that post-publishing it you're probably not going to fix it. It takes a lot of time. It depends on the severity of what you would see as the mistake. But with an uh, auto narrated audiobook, all you need to do is go back in, change the one word or the saying uh, that was pronounced in a way that you would have wanted differently. And you can publish it again, download the files, and it, it takes a matter of minutes to fix those types of errors. But of course, there are some uh, objections to auto narration. So let's go into some of those. So first of all, the voices are not good enough. They sound like robots or they don't sound like humans. They don't express enough emotion. They are just not good enough. What are your thoughts on that one? I think first and foremost is we also believe that kind of auto narration cannot capture the complete nuances that human narrators can. Some titles do require a lot of emotion and a very deep understanding of the book's context, like emotionally charged dramas or, or romances. Uh, so if, if you as a publisher and author can afford to invest in a full audiobook production with a professional narrator, we would highly encourage you to do so and, of course, encourage you to sell that audiobook on our platform. But that being said, we do believe that our auto narration is, is quite high quality. Many people's experience with text-to-speech comes from kind of the earliest versions of text-to-speech that they heard, which did sound very robotic and were quite hard to listen to for long periods of time. But text-to-speech quality does vary significantly in terms of quality, uh, but it also has improved a lot over the intervening years since it was first introduced. And Google has been working on text-to-speech for 15 plus years and seen lots of progress over that time. And Google's been particularly invested in text-to-speech because it's in so many of our products with Google Assistant across a wide range of products so you can speak and hear back from the device that you're speaking into. So Google has invested significantly, and we do think that the quality has improved drastically, and Google's, we do uh, think, stands out quite a bit. But I think the most important thing is if if you're curious is just to listen to it yourself. You can always go to our partner center. We have a ton of samples of different narrators. Quality does vary by narrator, but it's if we found it's really a matter of personal preference. Some people prefer one narrator, others prefer another. But just go listen to yourself if you have if you're curious about it. Mm, absolutely. I, I just had a follow on question on the voices. Can you use multiple voices within one audiobook? Uh, so, so that is a good question. So right now it's one. So you have a default narrator, but we've been working for a while on adding multiple narrators to an audiobook. It's definitely one of the, the biggest points of feedback we've had from publishers. If you have uh, either, let's say like a romance book with two points of view, uh, mm. male and female, you want to be able to have both one by chapter. You could do that once we do this functionality. It actually will go down to the word level. So you could have a conversation back and forth between two characters and it doesn't stop it too. You'll have the ability to have as many characters as we have narrators. So I think we have roughly uh, 15 to 20 English narrators. So you can have 15 to 20 characters in your book and you just go through and tag it 
and this is something that you could do kind of as I was mentioning before, like after if you already have it published, you can just go back and say, well, I want to add characters to improve the quality, improve uh, understanding. Uh, you'll have the ability to do that. And we expect it to come out sometime in the next few months. Okay, great. So hopefully within 2022, that multi, multi-cast <laughs> would be awesome because I feel like that's also one of the most expensive and complicated audio projects to do as, as independents who don't have their own studios. Um, if you have to uh, n- not just hire all the different actors, but also then edit that together, that is a big project. So I could see that as a sort of creative, that's something I would love to do, but I definitely could not afford to do that. So I would love to play with that within the tool where it's easy enough to change things. So yeah, that'll be really interesting when that comes out. So let's talk about the one that comes up a lot as well, which is it is ethically wrong to use AI for narration. We need to keep jobs for narrators. And this has gone so far as in the UK, we've got equity with a campaign to stop AI uh, stealing narrators' jobs, basically. What do you think about that one? Auto narration is about affordably creating audiobooks. Uh, it's as I said before, we don't think that auto narration can really match the nuances that the human voice can. The, the human voice is still, by far and away, the superior storyteller. But because of significant costs and time to create a traditional audiobook, that's why we have seen this large gap between ebooks and audiobooks, and that gap would continue into the foreseeable future. And for many publishers, the choice really isn't between human narration and auto narration. It's it's between auto narration and no audiobook at all. And so publishers can try out their first for their first time uh, audiobooks through auto narration. And they can really use it as a tool to assess audiobook demand for their titles before making an investment in 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 human narration. We kind of see them as going hand in hand. Both are trying to increase the audiobook catalog, grow the demand for audiobooks in general. And it's really just a testing ground for what you want to do further in audiobooks. It's uh, kind of a first step. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I don't think the two are the same thing. And in fact, I've been sort of advocating for a change in publishing contracts. So at the moment, people just sign away audio rights to publishers, whereas I think there should be more of a stratification of audio rights because many authors will sign away those rights and then it will never happen. So it's almost like there needs to be um, a difference between a human narrated project and an AI narrated project. Also, I like having both. So for example, my short story trilogy, A Thousand Fiendish Angels, there's me narrating it. So a British female, and then I actually have a male AI (laughs) narrating it as well. So some people like listening to a different voice, right? Some people would rather have a different voice. So I actually think having multiple editions with multiple different voices is is interesting uh, as well. Do you think that is that possible or is it just a one-on-one link within Google? So, so it is a one-on-one link, but it's only that if the publisher chooses it. So when they see a book, that book will only have one narrator, or well, as we talked about, it could have many narrators as part of it, but it'll, it'll only have one default narrator. But a publisher can choose to do many narrators for a uh, auto-narrated audiobook. So if you wanted to do one uh, that's different by geography, geography, for instance, you wanted to have an American female for the, for the U.S. market and a, a British male for the U.K. market, you could do that. It's really up to to you as a publisher. Right now, we don't have the ability for consumers to choose which narrator they want to speak the audiobook. So they didn't mm-hmm. ha- actually have to be different books. In time, we probably will get to allowing for more consumer choice. You know, if That way, if, if you're in the US and you want a different narrator and you can choose from a handful of ones, you'd have the ability to do that. Uh, right now, we're constrained a little bit by uh, running these uh, in uh, kind of not in real time, so we can get the highest quality. But as text-to-speech quality improves, it'll really come down to we can do these uh, live and they can choose which narrator they want. Mm, no, that's fantastic. I, I do think, as you said, I mean, this is, we're still in early days. I mean, what's funny is I've been talking about it for years. You've been talking about it for years. <laughs> 
what it feels like is actually starting to happen now. And I guess you mentioned their demand. And what have you seen in terms of the adoption, both by creators, but also by listeners? Are downloads and sales increasing of these auto narrated books or are they just kind of sitting there? Uh, so yes, we've seen significant downloads. It all starts with supply, though. We've and we've been pretty impressed with the level of adoption that we've seen and kind of how quickly it has happened since we rolled out the beta. N- now on our platform, thousands of publishers have not only created but uh, published an auto narrated audiobook. And for a lot of small publishers that we hear from, particularly a lot of self publishers. Being able to produce an audiobook has always felt completely out of reach, and having access to this technology is allowing them to publish their audiobook for the first time. And in some ways, we've heard uh, publishers share stories about connecting with readers for the very first time who've never been able to access their content because they only listen audio format, whether for personal preference or because they're in uh, the blind and low vision community, they have challenges with reading. So. We've seen a lot of publishers try it out, continue to grow adoption, and we're been quite impressed on the consumption side as well. People are buying these books, listening to them, engaging with them, leaving reviews, and the reviews are quite quite good, uh, especially when the publisher spends a lot of time to make sure that the audiobook has all the things that an audiobook would typically have. And we've been particularly impressed with our progress with Spanish language. We haven't, we only introduced it a few months ago, and we have a lot of listeners who are very eager to consume the Spanish language auto narrated audiobooks. And we think that's probably because our Spanish language catalog uh, gap between ebooks and audiobooks is even wider than our, our English gap. So if you have either a book that's natively in Spanish or translated to Spanish, we've seen a lot there as well. Yes. And actually, I wonder whether we're going to see the growth in AI narration audiobooks in markets other than English, mainly because of that reason is that this market is in, is hungry for content, whereas the English audiobook market is so mature that there there is some enough enough content to a point. But there's also a whole network of narrators, whereas I remember going to Frankfurt Book Fair and heard a lady from Ghana saying that a Across the whole of Africa <laughs> and India and Asia, they people don't have enough content in their own language or their own dialect. And we just can't replicate this in every single language and every single dialect without AI. So I, I almost feel like even if in English it's not adopted so much, although I think it will be, I, I feel like these other languages might have incredibly rapid growth. Yeah. We see the same. That's why we're adding more languages. We are starting with ones that have a little bit more robust of a audiobook market. But as you said, no language has as robust a market as English. So the gap is always wider in other languages. Uh, one thing just more broadly is just as we do more other languages for auto narrative audiobooks, we also look at how can we bridge the gap between English books and other and books in other languages to help with that process there. So I do think we'll see significant growth, not only in alternate audiobooks generally, but specifically by language, because there's just much more demand for them because they don't have access to a lot of audiobooks in their in that language. Mm, absolutely. And I think that's that's always my ethical response to people is, well, how can we not have AI audiobooks when 99% of the world pretty much is, is not able to access in a either an accent or a, a voice that or a dialect or a language that, that they want to? So for an affordable cost. So let's talk about money. <laughs> so how much does it cost at the moment to use the Google Play version of the auto narration? So currently it, it is entirely free. It is free right now because the product is in our beta program. And during the beta program, we have said that we will always have it free. Uh, and it's free for creation and publishing for an unlimited number of auto narrated audiobooks. Of course, as, as long as your ebook is, is live on Google Play. And once you create it and publish it, you have the ability to download it, to distribute to any other retailer or distributor that you so choose. We don't have a specific end date in mind for the beta. We've learned a lot through this beta program and are expecting to continue it for a while. But with that said, we do, when we end the beta program, expect to have a very modest fee after the beta program. Uh, It'll still be significantly, significantly cheaper than a traditional audiobook. But 
that is not now, and we're still in the beta program. So we would continue to encourage publishers to try it out as much as they can. Mm, yes. So as of mid-2022, it is it is free. However, I do want to say that obviously Google is a very big company that uses data to train AI. And I feel like we are helping Google train a voice speech to text, sorry, text to speech, <laughs> uh, AI with what we're doing with some of the fine tuning. So, and I absolutely think it's worth it, but I do think that it is data that we are helping with. So it is free for financially, but I do feel that Google is getting a benefit as well. What, what would you say to that? Yeah, so we do use the inputs, especially in the pronunciation correction tool, which is kind of our, our, our internal name for it, to try to improve it globally for all publishers. So if you find a mistake with one of our pronunciations and we think, oh, that's actually like a universal mistake, it's not just a personal preference, we do update it globally so that not only the other publisher across the way would be able to have that improvement, but you specifically, if you came back and we're doing another book a few months later, let's say, you wouldn't have to fix that again. So we are taking the inputs that publishers provide to try to improve it more broadly. And I think that's part of the program for us. We understand that this goes hand in hand. Benefits go both ways between us and publishers. And that's why we've started off with it free. And even when we do uh, remove the beta program, it, I think publishers will be very surprised at how modest the fee will likely be. Mm. And then in terms of selling the audiobook, so, I mean, what I don't like about general digital stuff is that we're sort of this race to the bottom. Everything should be free on some subscription model, which devalues a lot of the content. But then I hear people saying, well, AI narration or auto narration should be free or cheap because it doesn't cost anything to create. But it's still the creator's intellectual property. It's still an experience for the, the listener. So what do what is your guidance on pricing the audiobook for sale? Yeah, so we don't offer specific guidance for a specific audiobook, but I can say broadly, it. I, I really think about like, what is the additional cost of production for this audiobook when you already have the ebook created? So, uh, you know, ebooks in themselves, it takes a lot of time to write a book, it takes a lot of time to write a book that people want to buy, and that should be monetized. Uh, that is a lot of effort, both to create it, but also go through the process of publishing it. So what we advise is to think about, okay, I have an ebook for sale at a certain price. I could create a traditional audiobook. That'd be quite expensive for me to do so. But if I create an auto narrated audiobook, costs are very minimal. So we would encourage publishers to think a little bit more in terms of their ebook price. Definitely not, uh, uh, we're not advising publishers to do anything to say like, this should be free because the cost of creation is still about the ebook. You still needed to write the whole book and you want to monetize it in the best way possible. So we encourage them to think more like their ebook prices, a little bit less like a traditional audiobook because it doesn't have that huge upfront cost that you need to recoup. But we do see a lot of success with publishers monetizing these uh, very similar to ebooks. Uh, and so if you have a series, you maybe would put the first book in the series free and try it out that way. And it, there really isn't too much differences that we would see in terms of behavior besides you, that you now have an audiobook that is a little bit cheaper than a typical audiobook. Mm, yeah, I, I agree. Definitely cheaper than a human narrated, but still not free uh, unless it's, as you say, a first in series or a, or something that you are doing a promotion on, but just not in general. So also uh, as part of an increase in the use of AI tools, uh, I've worked with the Alliance of Independent Authors to create an ethical framework for use, which I'll link in the show notes. And that includes labeling of AI narrated audiobooks or auto narrated as you call it <laughs> so i've added on my covers i've added like this round circle which says digitally narrated and i put it very clearly in my title as well so but that is it's it's not a rule uh it's just something that i feel is important what are your thoughts on this kind of labeling or anything around making sure that customers know yeah so first and foremost we think it's very important to communicate to customers what they're purchasing if you told someone that your book was a romance novel and it was actually a horror novel, that would be quite a frustrating experience for your customer. And we don't really see any differences for auto-narrated audiobooks, you know, which is why we've embedded kind of two areas where we tell our customers that this is an auto-narrated audiobook. One is on the book detail page. So if you go 
to an auto-narrated book in any of our uh, surfaces across iOS, Android, uh, or our web experience, we do have a badge on every single book detail page that says, hey, this is an auto-narrated audiobook. Here's a link to a help center to help you understand what that means so you can learn more about it. So that's the first. And the second is for every single auto-narrated audiobook on our platform, we have a one-sentence intro that just says, hey, this is an auto-narrated audiobook. Uh, and it just is there to inform users if they are playing a sample, uh, they know right away what they're listening to. And it's actually not in the one that gets downloaded. So publishers don't have to worry about that. We only want it for ones that are on our platform because it does mention Google in the, the sentence. But beyond that, it's it's really up to the publisher, as as you said, to figure out how they want to message that this is not an audiobook. You can do with the cover, the description, or the price, as we we just talked about. Mm, yeah, and I want to encourage people listening. There's, th- I want to remove any stigma or shame that people seem to be feeling around using AI narration. It's almost like, well, we've got to hide it somehow. And it, that's not the point. And I feel almost this comes back to the voices aren't good enough. It's like, well, there's lots of problems with humans, breathing noise, and <laughs> as I said, mouth noises. And so to me, the artifacts, I call them the voice artifacts of humans. And then there's the voice artifacts of auto narration. I feel like there's something that we can probably embrace as distinctive and a reason why you know that it's auto narrated it's like we're not trying to hide it through making it error free we're labeling it we're embracing the technology and kind of proudly doing this as you say to try and bridge the gap between ebooks and audiobooks so i think it's i, I want to sort of change the feeling around the whole thing i mean obviously you're very positive about it but <laughs> what do you think about that i think that's exactly the way that we're thinking about it as well I, you said it earlier but it's really about a whole new category of audiobooks you have traditional human narrated audiobook and an auto narrated audiobook. And they're just different categories. People should know which category they're looking at and decide based off that and all the other factors that they're, they have for the book, whether they want to purchase it and listen to it. It should be transparent in what's going on. Uh, but ultimately, I think it's better for the entire ecosystem to have this new category so that we can really try to bridge that gap and get more and more people listening to audiobooks. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And as an audiobook listener myself, I listen a lot of the time at like 1.5 speed anyway. So <laughs> even humans sound like a robot. So, uh, okay. So obviously you said that we can download those files and it's really easy. You just download it. And then, for example, I'm selling through my Shopify store, which is creativepenbooks.com. And I'm using BookFunnel to deliver those files. So people can buy them on Google Play, um, Google Play Books. They can also buy them direct. But the reality is, is that some of the biggest companies in the audiobook market do not allow the sale of audiobooks that are not human narrated. It's, it's the conditions on their site. But I wonder, you know, we've had recently Spotify has acquired Findaway and an AI narration company, Sonantic, uh, recently. That's still going through. But it feels like mainstream adoption is, is on its way. And I would say that that would benefit everyone. So if, if Spotify did AI narration, it would benefit Google's AI narration and, and vice versa. So what do you think in terms of how these uh, audiobook incumbents will <laughs> adopt AI going forward? And that's your opinion, obviously. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Well, I, I can't speak to the specific decisions that a retailer makes. You know, every retailer makes their own decision, but there are a few factors that I think are going to be poignant when, when retailers do make those decisions. One is just what we've been talking about this whole time is the quality of the auto narration. And we believe our narration is is high quality and that they are a valuable contribution to the audiobook catalog. So if the quality is high, that that's an important factor. Uh, another is just supply. Uh, is there a lot of these auto narrated audiobooks uh, there? And also looking at languages we talked about before, uh, if you have a large gap in your Spanish uh, language content, and there's a large supply of auto-narrated Spanish content. That's, again, something important to consider as these retailers are, are making their choices. And of course, the last one really is demand for the book in audio format. If you have a lot of users that are hoping to consume a book uh, through an audiobook or through a listening experience, that is certainly very important to consider uh, overall. But ultimately, we want our publishers to be able to sell 
their content in whatever storefront they choose. That's why we don't have any exclusivity requirements and we are supportive of wide distribution across all retailers. I also think that it, it'll really uh, increase more broadly as it goes outside of just the books industry as well. Uh, in podcasting, as, as we're talking now, a lot of publishers are looking at, well, I have a lot of blogs and posts that I do every single week. How can I turn those easily into, into podcasts? And so I think that's where we'll also see growth and that, that will go hand in hand with auto narrative audiobooks as well. Yes, as people are more used to it. I mean, I feel like right now people are quite used to voices through their various devices and they know that that's not human. <laughs> so you you kind of get used to hearing the different voices. But as you say, I, I think the adoption is is happening and I think it's only going to speed up. And yeah, the voices are getting better and better. Do you, w- Would Google be looking at at any point people like me who are narrators doing voice, sort of training our own voice clones? Yeah, so this is kind of an important thing that we've looked at over the last few years. I think the first kind of important principle that we have is that we always want to make sure that it's very transparent to the author, that they're like signing a contract to do, uh, to create their own text-to-speech voice model. We do see a lot of difficulties with doing that on a scaled basis so that if we had it on a website and anyone could just submit some audio files of someone speaking and say, hey, I want to create a a text-to-speech version of this, there's not a lot of proof that we could say that this is the specific individual. So we do have challenges with rolling that out on a scaled basis. Every single one of our narrators that we have today, you know, our teams, mainly with Google Assistant, has met in person. You know, they recorded in studio and they signed a very specific agreement to say, hey, we can use this. We can use these samples to record and improve a Texas speech model. So I don't think we have a good solution to do this on, as I would call like kind of a scaled basis. Uh, but we are looking at it and trying to figure out if there is a way that we could do it with select people, but it's it's quite far away, I would say. And I think we really haven't seen the industry move there just because of all of the potential um, you know, bad actor scenarios that we would have to deal with. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> this whole area is a nightmare. But it, it as a narrator myself, I kind of feel like I need to license my voice before someone else does it since I've been podcasting mm-hmm. since 2009. There's so much of my voice out there. And as you know, I mean, you don't even need that much anymore to train a model with a voice. So, I mean, I, I kind of feel like anyone can do this stuff. But as you say, we're all responsible people and companies, so we need to do it properly. But yeah, this is interesting times for sure, but we are out of time. So where can people find Google Auto Narration and where can they get help if they need it? Yeah, so we have a, a dedicated website for auto narrative audiobooks. Uh, we have a link, I can maybe give it to you to put in the show notes, but if you are looking for it, all you need to do is type in auto narrated audiobooks into Google search and it'll come up. On that page, you'll find information about the entire program, listen to samples. Uh, there's also Help Center articles that uh, tell you exactly how to get started with auto audiobooks. And there's actually one that provides a full list of all of the narrators that we have in our program. So you don't need to be logged in to our partner center. You can send it over to a friend or a colleague without having to, to go into our partner center and listen to samples. So I think that's always the first step that we tell people to get started with. Just try it out yourself and give it a listen. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for your time, Ryan. That was great. Thank you. It's been great. Introduction You are an author. You turn ideas into reality in the shape of a book. You turn the thoughts in your head into valuable intellectual property assets. You understand how powerful the written word can be. This book will help you use your words to create a business plan to take your writing career to the next level, whatever that means for your situation. I'm Joanna Penn, and in 2009, I created a business plan for what became the Creative Pen Limited, a multi-six-figure company with books at its heart. I'm an award-nominated New York Times and USA Today best-selling thriller and dark fantasy author as J.F. Penn, and I also write nonfiction for authors. I'm an award-winning podcaster with two shows, The Creative Pen and Books and Travel, and an international professional speaker. My business has multiple streams of income, including books in different formats in multiple stores, and I've sold copies in 159 countries.
I also have online courses, affiliate income, podcast sponsorship and Patreon among others. But it wasn't always like this. I started out with one book, no audience, and no experience in publishing or online sales and marketing. But I wrote a plan for my creative and financial future and took action on my ideas, learning the necessary skills along the way. Since then I've continued to work toward those original goals, and in 2011, I left my corporate job to become a full-time author-entrepreneur. I've never gone back and I love my creative, entrepreneurial life. In this book, I'll guide you through the process of creating a business plan that will help you achieve your creative and financial goals. It's relevant for fiction and non-fiction authors, as well as those who want to include other products, services, and income streams. It's also applicable whether you're just starting out or if you already have a mature author business. A plan helps at any stage of the journey. Your business plan structure. This book follows the structure of the business plan, so you can focus on each section in turn as you go through. Part 1 covers your business summary and author brand, taking you through the process of deciding the overall direction for what you want to achieve and who you want to serve. Part 2 goes into the production process around your writing, publishing and licensing products and services. Part 3 covers your marketing strategy and author ecosystem. Part 4 goes into the financial side of your business, from mindset to revenue and costs, as well as paying yourself now and into the future. The final chapter will give you a framework for simplifying your plan and turning it into achievable steps across a chosen timeline. In each section I give examples from my own business plan and there are questions for you to answer and resources that might help along the way. You can find templates and a workbook to download and fill in and more resources at www.thecreativepen.com slash your plan. There is also a companion workbook available in print with all the questions, so you can write in that if you prefer. Importantly, this book doesn't go into detail on how to do the specific topics, for example, how to self-publish a book or how to do content marketing. I cover that in my other books for authors. If you already have my previous business book, Business for Authors, this is a rewritten and updated subset of that material, focusing on the specifics of a plan as opposed to everything involved in running a business. This book acts as a companion, as well as a more recent update to my own author journey. It will help you bring it all together into a coherent plan that you can use to take your author business into the future. Let's get into the details. Note, there are affiliate links within this book to products and services that I recommend and use personally. This means that I receive a small percentage of the sale at no extra cost to you, and in some cases, you may receive a discount for using my link. I only recommend products and services that I believe are great for authors, so I hope you find them useful. So I hope you found the interview with Ryan interesting and that you found the sample was easy to listen to. Of course, only you can decide how you want to proceed with auto narration or if you want to use it at all. But as I mentioned in the interview, I think things will move much faster in the coming year as the different players release different tools and offerings. Links in the show notes to where you can listen to more sample narrators and try out your own book. And remember, this is only available if you publish on Google Playbooks, so you have to be wide with your ebooks in order to do the audiobooks. So next Monday, I'm talking about estate planning for authors with Michael Leron, which is a fascinating talk about how you can put things in place for the future. In the meantime, happy writing, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope you found it helpful. You might also like the backlist episodes and show notes available at thecreativepen.com forward slash podcast. You can also get your free author blueprint at thecreativepen.com forward slash blueprint. If you'd like to connect, you can tweet me at The Creative Pen or find me on Facebook at The Creative Pen. See you next time.